All right, man. So obviously you know this pretty well, but I uh, I recently celebrated a, a little bit of a landmark birthday and uh, yes. <laughs> just just turned forty, which was a little bit wild. But look, and I got a lot of really amazing gifts and and really got taken care of on my birthday. But there was one that really stuck out to me that I thought I wanted to make sure to bring to you and show you this because I thought it was so cool. And I know that you will appreciate this. Hit me. So my brother and brother-in-law and sister-in-law got me this candy package for my 40th birthday. Now you hear that you're like, what in the world? What is he talking about? So this is, I, I pulled out the uh, brochure that it came with. I don't know if you can see that, but it's called vintage candy company. And they nice. only have, they only have a shop. Uh, I say a shop. They really just sell their stuff on Amazon, but I got to show you some of this stuff, dude. This is so awesome. So it came in this really, this really awesome nice. box. And, and for those that are just listening, I'm very sorry, but there's a really cool box with some just kind of cool. It just says like good times and smile and yummy and, and, and really cool stuff like that. But I got to show you some of this candy. No, hit me. Check, check this out that is in this box. This is literally going to take you back to our childhood. Number one, you recognize this? <laughs> that is Big League Chew for those that can't see us. I'm holding up a pack of Big League Chew. How many baseball games when we were, you know, 10 years old, did you see how much of this you could put in your mouth before you went and played in a baseball game? Am I right? <laughs> I literally almost had a panic attack in a math test one time because I put too much Big League Chew in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and um and yeah it's dangerous kids it's dangerous just but that's beautiful i love that well speaking of dangerous what a segue it's like you're in my head dude check this out <laughs> you see what these are ah the old pop rocks we got, we got a nice package of pop rocks now there is an urban legend surrounding pop rocks am i right oh, do tell do tell what is, what is it don't don't they tell you that this is always what we used to hear as kids that when you eat a package of pop rocks and then drink a soda that it'll like explode, literally explode in your mouth and like, <laughs> like almost make you, your, when you, you when could you're a die. kid. Yeah. When you're a kid, you thought your brain was going to explode. You could straight die from eating pop rocks in a soda and weird. We know, we knew nobody that that had happened to, but, but, but there you go. Right. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> but I mean, dude, there's so much good stuff in here. I'm holding up a package of sour nice. patch kids. I mean, I got, I mean, not that we promote this kind of thing, but candy cigarettes. This is all stuff that we used to go and get. Yeah, and just so you guys know, we used to we grew up in a really small town, and there was a little dollar candy store that we would go to and ride our bikes to and go and check it out and go and load up on this stuff. It's, it's just so cool. But I, I thought the nostalgia behind it, that's why I really wanted to make sure to give Vintage Candy Company some love here because these Absolutely. guys, they are, they are capitalizing. And we talk about the capitalization of novelty all the time. We do it well, all the time. And segueing into kind of what we're going to talk about today, you know, I think a lot of people, when they start to build their business, um, they think about trying to serve everybody and they don't think about that. Like you can build really, really profitable businesses by reaching like, and you know, we always go back to this article, a thousand true fans, you know, um, and this is like, if you haven't looked up this article, look up the article, a thousand true fans came out in 2008 and it's about, you don't have to have millions and millions of people. You don't have to be for everybody. You just have to be for a select few. And if you're for that select few and you really deliver it and you do like what those guys are doing, um, what happens is, is people talk about it. They get on podcasts just like this and they talk about it because <laughs> they're delighted with the experience. And so this sort of plays into what we're talking about today, which is, um, YouTube, and music. And, you know, when I came up, I, I'm a musician. You can see all this shenanigans that's behind me. There's a whole band set up behind me for those of you that have ever paid attention. Um, and I didn't darken it enough. Um, but the idea is, is when I was coming up and we were trying to, you know, get our sound out there, it was really difficult. It was really, really difficult. Today, if you're really paying attention to what's happening on YouTube, uh, TikTok as well, but YouTube specifically for the last probably 10 years, uh, you can find your niche audience. You can find your 1,000 true fans. And off of those 1,000 true fans, you can really explode. And so uh, today, that's I think that's what we're talking about today, right? In, in, in case I read my notes wrong, just making sure. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, – what are we talking about specifically? Just, just so I don't get the title wrong. No, we are literally going to talk about how YouTube can – shape and shift the entire landscape of music which is something that's very important to both of us yeah so uh let's dive in let's do it 
Okay, man. So it's no secret to anyone that knows you or I, or that talks to us for any longer than, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, but we're both obviously very big, huge music fans. I know there are a lot of people that say that obviously, but it is so incredibly true about us. And it has been for a really long time. Um, but along the way, both of us have been, you know, we've, we've been writers. We've, we've played instruments. We've been in bands. We, we followed bands. We go to live shows. We, we listen to, to music on the regular. Uh, it, it's a very, very big, important part of our lives. And that's why I wanted to talk to you about this today, because something I'm not, I'm going to be real with you, man. Something really affected me that I read in the news in the last couple of weeks. And I, I, I think it's just crazy. So I'll give you a little context. I, I, there's this article that I came across that it, it did two things to me at the same time. It floored me <laughs> and it kind of a little bit disgusted me. Uh, I, 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 it's just absolutely drove me wild. I can't believe it. So this article, and I'm sure that we'll, we'll make sure to link it in the show, show notes, but, um, it talked about something that I should have been aware of, but I guess I just wasn't. Um, and it talked about the extreme methods that uh, Korean pop, we we know it as K-pop, that, and their fans that they go to and continue to go to so that they can quote unquote rig the charts in favor of their favorite band. So this particular instance is actually referred to a band called Blackpink and and how their fans. By the way, they're called Blinks. How about that? Blackpink That's fans great. Are, are called Blinks. Uh, number one, that was a nice little nugget. I thought that was really good, but they have actually organized targeted campaigns to influence YouTube algorithms to actually increase their streaming numbers. So I'm like it. So as you can tell, that's, I, it did, it very much floored me. So my first question for you is <laughs> number one, were wait. you, were you aware of this? And number two, what the actual hell is going on? <laughs> I was aware of this. Um, I have long been into the YouTube algorithm for, you know, for obvious reasons, but um, it actually came back a little while ago um, that what was happening, um, there was actually some social causes um, that were happening. And, and this actually um, really started to sort of hit with some of the, um, I believe it was at the beginning of kind of the Russian Ukraine conflict is when I started seeing some of this heavy, but it was a little bit before then. It's, it's not only were they rigging these uh, algorithms to sort of put things in position for, you know, to climb the charts and things like that. Uh, it was also for activism type things and to, to organize. And so they, you know, with this knowledge that they had, they were getting these me big messages out um, that were, you know, very political and very world changing type of things with this. And so you know, it's 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 interesting because, you know, we kind of look at this from a musical perspective of like, oh, well, why is something that maybe I'm not necessarily into getting so much play all over the world? And it's because people are digging in heavy into how certain algorithms work. And if you really get heavy into it and like deep, deep into things, you start to realize um, what certain platforms are looking for. And YouTube specifically from a perspective of music um, but also from a perspective of business, if you really understand what's going on there, you can do some amazing things very, very fast. Um, so just a teaser here. One of the things that we used to do, and I'm not saying that, you know, maybe we still do it. Um, <laughs> but when we have clients that need to rank fast, Google is pretty slow. Um, I, I mean, you know, there's some places where I can rank a website in a day or two. Um, but if you get into like bigger areas, um, it can take some time to outdo some of the, you know, old guard of websites that have been trying, you know, up at the front page for years. What's not incredibly difficult to rank for a lot of the times is uh, for keywords on YouTube. And so you can actually get sh on the first page uh, of Google um, in sort of a video snippet type way for your customers. And that's not perfect, but it's a great way to start. Plus you can link back to the sites and start building links that way. There's really interesting things that you can do if you pay attention to what we call the long tail and um, I, I don't know exactly where you're wanting to go with all this, but like, <laughs> I love talking about this stuff. So there's lots of directions and I think it's, it's valuable for anybody listening to know this stuff. YouTube is extremely powerful when you focus on the long tail right now. And what I mean by that is we're talking keywords that are four or five keywords deep. And so not just your core one keyword I'm trying to rank for, but when you try to rank for something that has like four different words in it, um, logically, you know, listed, you know, obviously, but when you're trying to do that, 
that's when you can take over a lot of search real estate. And especially if it's something that people are really searching for right now, you can do some very big things. And so, you know, I, it plays, I, I didn't read, I haven't read the article yet that you're reading, which I'm, <laughs> but I've read articles like this. And so when you really start to understand how you can string together lots of long tail keywords surrounding something and start aiming at something that's just, uh, you know, a single or double keyword, uh, you can do some amazing things, um, that you would never think possible. And you can disrupt a lot of old guard that, you know, these bands have been around for 10, 20 years. They've got built in fans. The fans are looking for it. They're ready. They're already there. You can disrupt that very, very quickly. That's, that's not to say all the other little tricks that we have that we, I'm sure we're going to talk about on this call, but, uh, that's, that's a start. No, I mean, and you're touching on all the right things exactly where I want to go, because obviously, you know, we know that YouTube uh, very obviously isn't the only platform out there that's using these algorithms to really, you know, structure their content. But but I do want you to dig in a little bit because because it's a it's a world that I don't really know about or understand. And I think a lot of people could use an understanding on it, especially when I'm thinking about how I'm going to combat these blinks. How do I do this? How do I get by the fact that they're taking over my music? So. Uh, you know, because obviously think when a lot of people here and I'll consider myself here as well, when they hear the word algorithm, it has this connotation that it's something that's just completely beyond our understanding. Right. Um, but I know that it's not necessarily always the case. So what is it specifically about the way that YouTube streams their music that kind of sticks out to you and, and how are kind of how are bands? You know, if you're putting your band out there. How are you getting out there and making sure that people are watching you and hearing from you? Well, one of the things that you have to look at uh, with anything that you're putting on uh, both TikTok, YouTube, any video platform is getting people past the first 30 seconds. You know, are people literally sticking? They land on your video. Do they stay on your video? That That's a huge, huge part of how you take advantage of what's going on. And um, when you really get deep into it, because like I said, some things we, we throw up because you know, we're creating content. We want the content to be out there. And that's that's what it is. Other things we're very focused on. How do we rank this particular thing really, really fast? And so when you're trying to rank something really, really fast, um, you have to make sure that the first 30 seconds of your content are engaging people and they're staying for those first 30 seconds. Of course, we want them to watch as long as they possibly can, but those first 30 seconds are absolutely critical. The next thing is that you build things that are very niche specific, very niche specific. And so when you, when you want to start out, you know, a small band wants to build something that's very niche specific. And so, the thing that a lot of bands miss, um, not and not bands, just bands, but a lot of businesses miss, is who are my actual people? You know, from a band perspective, most bands don't know who they sound like. You know, I, I'm guilty of this every time I start a new band. It's hard for me to detach myself from what I'm doing to understand who I sound like. If you understand who you kind of sound like or something you're, you know, close to, you can manipulate the algorithms to put you in front of the right people because you sound like someone else. And that's powerful because if you sound kind of like someone else, it's not a hard jump for someone to say, oh, I like this. I also like this. This is cool. I want I want more of this from my existing artists, but like this is a cool place to go to for this kind of sound, which I'm really into. And so understanding that if you start throwing in keywords that have to do with that original artist uh, into your description – into some of the things that you're doing, you can do a really good thing. So I'll give you an example of how this works. One of the most popular trends on TikTok and YouTube shorts right now is to say, what would happen if Blink-182 played Smells Like Teen Spirit? (laughs) Now, what we have just done vocally, but also in a title, is we have a very long tail keyword that is Blink-182 Smells Like Teen Spirit. And so we're starting to attack some very important keywords that are already locked in with big brands that the algorithm is going to start to say, okay, well, people that are into this and into this probably will be into this. And so we start getting that. Plus, that's an interesting topic. I want to hear what that sounds like. So I'm going to listen <laughs> past the first 30 seconds to actually get into like what's happening. Okay, I, I want to listen and, and hear what is this actually? What's actually going on? on that side. And so these are some things that people are doing uh, from a music standpoint. That's really good. I I think the other side is, is once again, niching down, really, really niching down. And it's not just, Hey, I want to, I want to have a video that ranks for, um, you know, like, let's just say the term pizza. (laughs) Let's not say, let's not even say, you know, pizza. And then like location Jonesboro, Arkansas pizza, which is where I live. Right. Let's not just rank for something like that. 
let's really put in you know best pizza place in Jonesboro, Arkansas. You know, and that, that sounds so lame, uh, but those are the kinds of things that like people are literally searching for. You know, and and not all the time is there something that's taking up the search results. So that video is going to actually show up in the search results. And listen, when I'm looking for like pizza, I absolutely want to see a video of somebody talking about their pizza. Like I want to see what it looks like. I want to I want to feel you know where I'm going to be going. So, like I said, it's it's a lot of the times it's really thinking about what is somebody searching not only when they're searching on YouTube, but what are they searching on Google. That is maybe something that's a lot longer than a couple of words. Don't worry so much about the name of your business being in the title of the video. (laughs) Don't worry so much about the name of your business being the first thing in the description. Worry about what are the keywords that people are digging in on that they're searching without ever knowing who the hell you are. And then that's where you really start to do this. And from a music perspective, you know, what are they searching? You know, and this is one that I do all the time. I am always searching for song name cover. Hmm. You know, like I love the original artist, but I want to see different spins on this. Now, you know, me as a musician, I like to see different ways people play things, but also there are some great bands, Boyce Avenue, shout out to Boyce Avenue. Boyce Avenue is a great band that has built an entire touring career off of doing cover songs. And, um, you know, huge, huge, huge you know, sort of movement that they've built just by doing cover songs. And, you know, we know uh, one of the bands that we love, and and this is one of those things that we should never admit uh, in public, (laughs) but uh, a band called Carmen, Uh, you know, they did a cover of one song and it was a rap song. And this song absolutely blew up. It's two people. And I mean, they have, they have songs that I like absolutely love to this day and they got to go do their own thing. They got to write their own stuff. But they got their record deal off of that one cover song that absolutely exploded. Now, what was great is is there were people that are literally out there searching for X song, and they showed up on the first page of the Google search results. People were like, well, that's not what I want, but that's interesting. They clicked into it, and they grew something powerful. So like I said, if you start thinking, okay, how do I build a video that is 30 – I can at least get them to watch the first 30 seconds – and how do I build a video that my keywords, the first things that come out of my mouth on the video, the first things that are written in the keyword um, in the you know title of the video, the first things that are sort of interspersed in the description, if you think about those three things, you can really start to take advantage of what the algorithm is doing without getting extremely nerdy about it. Yeah, and you, so you've taken the conversation exactly where I wanted to go. It's 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 perfect segue because – Obviously, we're talking about music, and we're t- doing it a little tongue in cheek, but not really because music is a business, and that's Absolutely. exactly and that's exactly what we're talking about. Is you know the same kind of principles that we're talking about being applied from a music standpoint are obviously applicable from a business standpoint, and, and that's across the board. So, just for years in, in general, and I'd love to get your input on this. We, we've we've heard about people who are now big, big stars that were discovered on YouTube, you know, from a music standpoint, I, I, if I remember right, I believe, I think Justin Bieber got discovered by Usher through YouTube. If I remember right, I know that, uh, like, like journeys, most recent, uh, front man got actually discovered from a YouTube video. So there's some huge discoveries that have taken place from YouTube, but that's going on in the business world too. So when you, when you hear that kind of thing, as you as a musician, as a business person, is that kind of is that kind of encouraging, discouraging? What 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 do you, what do you kind of think about people who are growing to that? You know, we're talking that upper echelon of fame through an avenue of YouTube versus the old methods of you know having to beat the streets and hand out flyers. <laughs> you know, I think it's great because I think talent should be the overriding factor, and I don't just mean talent from a perspective of being a musician. I mean talent from the perspective of being a business owner too. Um, you know, we all we all like to travel. We all like to go eat in, in places. And one of my favorite things is a lot of the a lot of the places that I have gone to eat across the country over the last few years have come from I watched somebody teach me how to make something at home, um, and they were a chef that had put together a restaurant. Um, one of my favorite one of my favorite personalities, and they have a Netflix show and all this stuff. But I follow them on YouTube. I follow them on TikTok. Is David Chang? David Chang is absolutely an amazing chef who has turned into, you know, he's, he's a great storyteller is really what David Chang is. Great chef, better storyteller. 
And so a lot of the restaurants that, you know, David Chang has put together are places that are like on my target list or I've been to. And that's the thing is I want to go eat to these places and like it becomes something that like he's leveraged these algorithms on YouTube, on TikTok to get in front of people, to teach them how to do something or to review. Like a lot of what we do now is like we just like we find cool stuff and we do edit on TikTok and it's other people's content. And we're just like, yeah, that's cool or no, I don't agree with that. And then we actually spread it onto like YouTube shorts and we do it in other places. But the idea behind this is, is you can position any business now in a way that people were like, oh, cool. I learned how to do this one thing from Atkins. Um, and Atkins has this business over here. So when I do need that, I'm going to buy from Atkins. And so it doesn't matter if you're completely local with your business and you're like have a you know 10 to 20 mile radius. It doesn't matter if you have an online business. Really starting to use that algorithm can help you explode and it can have people coming from all over the world to actually patronize your business and be be someone that buys from you if you are putting out content that is teaching them how to do something or it's putting out content that's entertaining them. And from musicians to business owners, that's the key. Hey, listen, if you're not someone who sings and dances, cool, that's fine. Teach me the thing that you do know how to do. Maybe you're like really good at Minecraft. Maybe you're really, really good at cooking biscuits. Uh, we should talk because I love to eat them. Uh, maybe you're really good at helping people get rid of headaches um, that are caused you know, from tension at work. Whatever it is that you happen to be good at, uh, you may not think you're really great on camera. That's okay. People don't care. Just get on and talk about what you're doing and really pay attention. When I'm actually doing this and I'm structuring my video, can I get someone to watch the first 30 seconds? And is my keyword, you know, four or five words deep. And when you do that, you can do some really, really cool things. Um, and I think probably the next thing we should do is give people formulas. If you are doing this, how, what, what's the formula to putting together a video that can help people? And so let's talk about this. Like, how would I put together a YouTube video or a YouTube short or a TikTok right now that would help a lot of people? to do um, you know, what they can need to help with, but also get me where I need to be. So here is my video formula. Short video, long video, doesn't matter. It's the same formula. So first thing that we're going to do when we're putting together a video is we're going to think about, okay, who are we actually going after? All right, who's the person that's on the other end that we want to help? The next thing is, is okay, what's the thing that I have that's going to help them? Okay, so what's the thing that I have that's actually going to help that person to do the thing that they want to do? From there, okay, what are the four or five steps that I have to teach or more, whatever it is, that actually do this? This, By the way, this is the list that I usually have sitting right, right, right next to the camera on either a whiteboard or a piece of paper that I'm like reading off so I can stay on point when I'm doing this. You can't see that stuff on the camera, but it's there, right? And then finally, what's my call to action or the how to get more from me or like, you know, what's the, what's the next thing you should do? That's the thing. So who I am, what I've got for you. Um, what it's going to do for you and what you should do next. And, and those are the, the the big, big things. And, and like really making sure that you just like sandwich the content in there somewhere. But most people will listen to a video past the 30 second mark if you get that first initial thing in there. Hey, my name is Ben Atkins. I am a licensed chiropractor. And today I'm going to teach you exactly how to get rid of tension headaches if you're having them two or three times a week, how to get it down to maybe where you're only having them once a month. Okay, let's dive in. And let's get into it. The first thing that you're going to do is if you are if you are sitting at a desk at a computer all the time, what I want you to do is every single hour of the day, I want you to think about doing this. Take your thumbs. For those of you that are watching us on the podcast, you can actually do this. For those of you that aren't, you have to go watch the video. But what you can do is you can take your thumbs and you're going to rotate them to the back of the room. So you're going to kind of, it'll be funny feeling at first, but rotate them to the back of the room. You're going to feel your shoulders start to kind of open up a little bit. And then you're going to kind of look up like this. For every hour that you're at a computer a day, you want to do this exercise and hold it for about 30 seconds. And when you do that, you're going to get over that rolled shoulder thing. You're going to get over the tension in your neck. And you got to really do it every day. So maybe set an alarm on your phone, but you're going to start to see good things happen. All right. If this helps you subscribe to the channel, uh, you can also opt in for uh, some extra tips that we've got for people with headaches by going to the URL in our description. That's that's the structure of a video. Like that's yeah. the thing and and you got to think the title of that video has all the keywords that we would need in it. How to get rid of tension headaches if you sit in front of a computer all day. Like 
That's extremely long tail, right? <laughs> it's extremely. I don't even know if that'll fit in the description in the title, but like you get where I'm going with this. And the idea behind this is if you were a chiropractor and it just did little short videos like that all day, and all you're really doing is stuff that you already teach patients in your office, you're going to build a following. Not only are you going to build a following of people that are in your local market, but you're going to have people coming from all over to talk to you. You're going to start getting speaking gigs because people are going to find you on YouTube and be like, this doc knows what's up. We should bring him in. So opportunity is going to open up. And I think that's the thing is it's like if you know how to sort of take these things that you already know how to do, you know how to structure them into pieces of content, and then you know a couple of key things about how that algorithm works, you can really blow up past what maybe you ever thought you would be able to do with your tiny little brick and mortar or your tiny little business where you're you're selling cards like online. Any of these things that you're doing, like the, your candy company that you know we talked about in the opening of the show, all I really want to know is take a little bit of time hold up a piece of candy on a video. Tell me the history of where that came from. I am so in. I love that kind of stuff. I'm such a history person, but I love candy too. Like <laughs> that's the kind of thing that, and that gets me to, that gets me into your box. It gets me into ordering it and being, and being a part of your world. That's the kind of thing that blows businesses up really, really fast is when you can do those kinds of things. And so that that's, that's kind of like, it's a really long answer to a really short question. So I apologize, but those are the kinds of things that you can do with the YouTube algorithm from a lot of different areas that are going to blow things up for you. Yeah. So, I mean, essentially what we're saying is, yeah, you might not turn into Bieber, but <laughs> you, 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 you are going to add a lot of value because guess what? There's, this is a great big world. It's a great big table with seats for all of us, right? Yeah. So we, we can all, we can all grab our seat and that's, there's a, there's a, you know, whether it's a, a big Bieber size seat or it's a, I'm the best chiropractor in town type seat. It's, there's a lot of room for all of us. So, uh, right. and I, and some, and stuff you talked about too, I think is really, really good. It, it, and and I, I think it's a good, you know, kind of segue as far as a conversation about, production. So obviously I know something from a, from a musical standpoint, production is, is something that's very big in your world and how you go about producing music. It's, it's where you spend a lot of your time. And I imagine, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but I imagine YouTube has had quite an influence on how music has been produced, whether it's, you know, through product reviews or through, uh, you know, maybe someone showing you the best practices for mixing a song or, you know, whatever it may be. Well, that's happening in the business world too. And I think there's a lot of correlation for how, you know, when you talk about setting up a video to show someone how to relieve tension headaches, I think that production element is such a huge, huge piece. So talk about that a little bit and how you've kind of done that a little bit from the music side, but you've also done it from a business side and YouTube's been a part of all of it. One of the big things from uh, producing content, and I'll, I'll get into that first, and then I'll tell you a little side story that I think is really interesting about like the, some of the dumbest ways you could make money, but like the, in how small that you could niche down, right? And I think this is incredibly interesting. Um, the first part is like production. The number one mistake people make where they don't get out the kind of content that can help their business blow up is they don't have a place to do it that's always set up. That's it. That that's the ballgame. The really cool thing about this, about our podcast, about what we're doing is, is like there is one place in my house right here that uh, is always set up for this. It's always like all I have to do is I bring my computer over here, I set it down right there. If you guys ever see me looking down, like it's because my computer is right below the camera, and we, there's this place. I set my computer up, I hook a couple things in, and we go. Like that, there is no me having to set eight lights up and do all this stuff. It's always the same thing. We turn these lights on, we turn those lights down to a different color. That's this is not the normal color that I work in my office when when we do things. But it takes about ten seconds to go from whatever else I'm doing in the world to sitting in front of things. One of the things that like people say, well, Ben, you know, I don't have, uh, I probably don't have the budget that you have to do this. Well, you may not, but that's okay. Go on to Amazon right now, buy a ring light. It's about this big. Buy a ring light, and you'll see there's a little place that you can stick your smartphone in the middle and click record. That's where you start. The next thing, and probably the the very, very next thing that you want to do is you want to figure out how to attach something like this to your phone. And so, like with the iPhone, what you can do is because this is uh, because this is what it is, it's a USB sort of connection. You can actually use the, uh, and I'm sure that they're going to get this fixed where you don't have to do this hack that I'm about to give you guys, but. <laughs> Right now, the iPhone uh, camera utility. So there's this little thing you stick in here, and it, it's like so you can stick in like a camera uh, memory card, and like there's a USB thing on it too. Uh, that's how you hook it in. 
And so you can hook in your camera. And so like you got this, you got your ring light, you got your professional microphone, you got three pieces that any time, I mean, that ring light stays there, the microphone stays there. You just put your phone up and hook everything up to it and turn the light on and you're good to go. And what we try to do here, and you guys don't know our process, but with the podcast, we try to do everything as in bulk as we can. And, you know, every podcast that we do, we try to pull out, you know, like five pieces of content that we can use on a TikTok or YouTube or something like that. Uh, But the idea is production wise, you're going to fall back and not do it if you don't have a place for it. And, And that's incredibly important. The other side of this where we're relating back to music is like, I've got the same thing I have for this. I have the same thing for my music. It's actually like right behind me. And so every week when we come and we actually produce music, or even if we're just practicing music, we have this setup that we never have to touch anything. In 10 seconds, we pick up our instruments, we hook in, and we have a really decent sounding setup so that we can get done what we need to get done. Or if we're going right into a computer to record, 10 seconds, we're set up, everything's ready to go. What you want to have is the second that you're ready to be creative, the second that you're ready to do something, it's there. Because I can't tell you how much creativity dies in setting up your space. And that's the key. The key to production, the key to doing really good stuff on YouTube or TikTok is to have a space that's ready to go when you're ready to go. Even if you have it scheduled for some time, you don't want to have that scheduled time being set up. And so that's the key. Find somewhere in your house. And literally, you don't need any space at all. It's just like tiny little spaces that you can just You don't need a big room like this. And you can get it done. You can get it really fast. But the key to actually doing this is take your hour to two hours to three days to a week to get your setup right one time. And then from then on, you sit down and be creative, and that's how you do it the right way. Well, I'll specifically ask you what I was thinking of because in my head, I'm thinking, okay, you know, from a YouTube standpoint, do I need to be Justin Bieber with 50 million <laughs> YouTube views, or do I need to be a, a chiropractor who gets, you know, maybe three or four uh, patients from one of my videos? Like, how do you, as far as from your YouTube standpoint, how do you judge your content? based on their success. How, what, what, what is a successful piece of content for you? Is it number of views? Is it, you know, people that, you know, are, get engaged with your, with your brand overall, you know, what, what, what's, what's kind of the, the gauge for you? See, for us, it's funny. Cause you can like go, uh, you can like go to our channels um, and you can like, look at like the amount of people that have seen stuff or like stuff. And you're like, well, they're not doing anything special. Um, I am incredibly good at squeezing out leads, incredibly good at it. And so I don't need a video to have a hundred views. I don't need it. Like that that's the thing that you have to understand is over the years, one of my talents is is like I will bring the right people through the door that will spend a lot of money with me. And that that's just something I've worked on a lot. So I can actually people are like, well, you just put out a lot of content, but like it's not like it's blowing up like Gary V over here, but it's because I don't need to. And that's the beautiful part about it is what I'm looking for is when we put out a piece of content, did leads come through the door? Did I get 10 people that were that of the 30 that watched it uh, today? You know, maybe we got 30 today, 30 tomorrow, 30 the next day. Doesn't matter. Of the 30 people that watched it today, did I get 10 people reach out and be like, hey, I really love that. That was good. Because the idea is that's a lead that will spend money with me. That's the key. And so every business is a little different. People like Justin Bieber need a ton of fans to make money because in the music industry selling records if 10 million people are watching a uh youtube of a, of one of his videos how many people are going to actually go buy the album or stream the album it's it's a small percentage of that but it works because he's got a lot right, right. and that's that's the cool thing and obviously he's got more than 10 million people watching a video but you get the idea yeah. but for like my business it can be very very small and so I actually want to tell a story, and for those of you that are watching, you saw that I disappeared for a second, and there was a little silence, and it was really awkward, and Marshall handled it really well. Um, <laughs> but what I'm holding up right now is a piece of equipment, okay? Now, this is – when I play live gigs, this is a it's, – it's called a Helix. It's a line – it's from a company called Line 6. It's called a Helix. And this was not a cheap piece of equipment, man. This 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 was probably a $1,200 to $1,500 piece of equipment, Right. It's really rugged. It sits on the floor. When I need to switch from like a distorted sound to a clean sound, I hit one of these buttons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm a musician. That's not what this is about. (laughs) What's really cool about this, and that you can go find these on YouTube. And this, I I bring this up because this was the perfect question that you ask for this. Line 6 obviously has a channel where they talk about this and it sells. But 
that's not the marketplace that I think is incredibly interesting. What's interesting about this pedal and what Line 6 does and what a lot of these pedal creators do is they allow people to set up their sound on the pedal, but then you can export the sound. So the sound that I built, even if it was built on something that was already in this pedal, is my sound. So this is what's really interesting. You've got people on YouTube right now, and one of the, and I'm just going to throw a shout out. There's a company called Worship Tutorials. It's a couple cats. They do worship music. like They lead worship bands, but they use pedals like this. And what they've done is they have very specific sounds that they painstakingly program for themselves that they use in their worship st- services. But what they do is this. They get on and they do a whole YouTube video and they're talking about here is our sound that's for this. And so they'll actually, here's the long tail because this is where it gets good. They'll talk about a band and a sound that is. They'll talk about, here's your singer-songwriter. If you're a singer-songwriter and want to have something, they'll talk about these various things. Here is a distortion um, that sounds like this artist. And they'll build out these very specific things that have like a long tail keyword. How how to sound like so-and-so. Okay, cool. Now, here's where their product comes in. They've built patches that I can buy and then download and send directly to this pedal so I can instantly sound just like that. And so they go to a video. They've got these patches. Maybe these patches are only, you know, five to ten bucks. But they get, you know, they get a few thousand people to watch this, and they're making money off these patches. And the odds are if you buy one, you're buying another because guess what happens when I bought a patch? I also went on their list. (laughs) <laughs> and so now every new patch that they come out, they can send me something. And that's what's really cool is like you don't need millions. I mean, that's why we always talk about that thousand true fans concept is if you just put out content and you're capturing a few leads here and there every single time you put out a piece of content over the span of a month, over the span of a year, those add up. And if you're running a business like I do a lot of times where like the average um, spend is like my average customer per year is spending $500 with me. You guys do the math, and I don't need a lot of customers to do pretty well. I I just don't. And and that's what's so great. It's it's like you start doing the numbers, and and now when everybody starts looking at our total views, even in the beginning, like, of course, our views grow, so I don't know where it'll be when, when you actually, anybody actually watches this or listens to it. But You look at our views, you look at our listens, they don't have to be very high. It's just, are we doing the things to attract the right kinds of people? The right kinds of people for our brand are people that are actually spending $500 a year with us. And so those are the people we're attracting. A lot of the other people we're not attracting. And, you know, that's okay. That's okay. And that, you know, that we, we sort of play into the early, uh, 70s Apple model. We're not for everybody, but if we are for you, we're very specific to what you do and you will spend good money because you already have good money because you already have a business. That's the way we sort of operate. And so, like I said, I, this, this, when your question made me think of this, <laughs> I know those guys, and there's lots of people that do this, this sort of sounds programming to these pedals. I know those guys don't have the most views in the world, but they, they're attracting the right people and the people that are doing, I mean, listen, man, I had to spend fifteen hundred dollars for this pedal five ten bucks for a sound that i really want is nothing to me so the people that they are bringing in have money to spend and they're more than willing to go buy it just to skip the process of having to program in the sound themselves so great question yeah i think there's a lot of a lot of value to be learned there from what you're talking about there i feel like you know you and i could literally talk about this topic in all the different directions we could go all day long it's just the perfect mix and i think you probably agree it's the perfect mix of things we love it's it's music it's technology it's marketing it's psychology it's how people are using technology to put you know their art into the world and and then what goes behind it and what doesn't uh to make it all work it's all just really really fascinating i think there's obviously a, a extremely direct correlation here for something that we talk about all the time that's being able to operate a business from a backpack i mean hell literally the same goes for a musician, right? I mean, you've, you've got 100%. your art, you've got your tool to create your art, whatever, whether it's a guitar or it's a laptop, it's a phone, it's a camera, it's a canvas, you know, whatever it is. And then you get a vehicle that's going to take you there, right? And then bam, you've got this sustainable and important business. And I think that's such a really, really valuable piece. But uh, I, I know you kind of agree on that as well. No, 100%. You know, uh, getting into the musician side too, is I have friends here in my little town that... They don't have a PA system. 
they, they lit. I mean, they have they. I mean, I guess it's a PA, but literally, there's it's a little amplifier. They can plug their mic, they can plug their guitar in, and instead of having to learn all these other pieces, they learned how to be really good with what they had. And what they do is they show up, and people want to listen to them. And the majority of what they're doing is cover songs. They make a full time living, really good living, by playing cover songs uh, around probably a hundred mile radius. And here's the other interesting part about this. They've start a lot of these friends have started to play off in places that are thousands of miles away because people saw something that was a recording of them on YouTube and they're like, Oh, that's interesting. We'd love to bring that person in. We'd love to pay for them to come hang out. And so my friends turn these, you know, these gigs into trips. They go play and they're accepted all over the place, but they would not have had that had it not been for, Oh, I'm going to tape, I'm going to tape myself at this gig. They throw it on you. We're not talking pro stuff. They literally turned on their phone. They taped a gig. They threw it up, and somebody was like, "Cool, that's awesome." And so their business has expanded in a very low level way. We're not. We're talking hundreds of views total, but the right people were watching, and I think that's where it turns into something that's really, really powerful. 